there are hundreds of chemicals in the environment that are coming from products that we are using every day. And these chemicals were declared safe dozens of years ago. And now we understand that they can disrupt the endocrine system, the controlling system of our bodies. Well, our hormone systems are very complex. And everybody must understand it goes beyond the usual sex hormones. There are a lot of hormones. Insulin is a hormone. I don't think most people understand that. And we have an epidemic of diabetes and obesity all connected in the Northern Hemisphere that now, basically, uh, some of the most recent studies and even a human study showed a link between a very commonly used plastic called bisphenol A and diabetes, obesity, and cardiovascular problems. What we used to think was that we could use high-dose testing to predict what's going to happen at low levels. That's how all regulatory toxicology works. We used to think that that was sufficient. But that was before um, we began to realize that some contaminants, like bisphenol A, behave like hormones. And the people that study hormones, endocrinologists, have known for years that what happens at high doses isn't necessarily the same as what happens at low doses. So all of a sudden, as toxicology is confronted with this new way of looking at chemical action, they have to throw out one of their most basic assumptions, that the dose makes the poison. The numbers are so small that they're beyond the comprehension of most people. That's how small they are. So you think of a part per thousand, a part per million, a part per billion, a part per trillion. A natural hormone below a part per trillion, it can stimulate breast cancer cells to grow. And now we are seeing chemicals like bisphenol A that are what hard, clear plastic is made out of and the lining of cans is made out of. It can stimulate breast cancer cells at below a part per trillion, just like the natural hormone. Mängden kemikalier vi får i oss spelar alltså inte så stor roll, utan det är tidpunkten. Definitely timing of exposure is very critical, and it doesn't take much. But we know now, as more and more people are working with the developing system from the time the sperm enters the egg until either the, the chicken hatches or the mammal or the human is born, uh, we're just beginning to understand that chemistry. That chemistry operates in the range of parts per trillion and parts per billion, which industry has told us for years. It's harmless. Concentrations like that are unimportant. But when you interrupt a vital system, something that's developing where these eggs are splitting and developing and budding and forming legs and arms and duct systems and glands, at a part per trillion, these are very dangerous chemicals. The easiest concept for people to remember is that this hand and the fin of a dolphin and the wing of a bat at the early embryo stage, they look identical. And inside of the wing of a bat and inside of the fin of the dolphin is a hand. So. At the beginning of development of a fish, or a frog, or a mouse, or a human, the early stages of development that are disrupted by endocrine disruptors and the genetic mechanisms are almost identical. We end up looking different, but don't let that deceive you. The mechanisms of development are very, very similar and the disruption events of development lead to diseases in all of these species. One of the, the big developments has been for us to identify that there is a critical period during development of the male fetus when there 
is extreme vulnerability to disruption of hormone production or action. And it's, it's quite a narrow window. It's based on animal studies, but we've got very good evidence that the same applies to the human. We have proven that in animals, if you expose during the time that you start out, your body starts out as one single cell and then becomes two cells and four cells and many cells. And we know that as one cell is becoming many other cells, the hormones that control that, if you disrupt them, then you permanently alter the genes in the new cells. And when you do that at the beginning of life, those cells and all of the cells that come from them are defective. And the consequence is that, for instance, after puberty, when the reproductive system starts forming, abnormalities in the organs that after puberty begin to develop, like the female uterus, suddenly you start to see diseases of that organ. You don't see the disease in a child because the uterus is not functioning yet. So not just one system. This could be the development of the brain, which basically the brain at that time is getting programmed for how an individual is going to develop later in life as well. So their behavior is being affected. Intelligence could be affected. Uh, and you know, we talk a lot about nurture, but you can't, nurture definitely can make you learn to love. It helps you learn to love. But if you're not wired correctly in the beginning, nurture isn't going to work. And these are the things that I worry about. I see so many children today who don't relate. They can't look at you. They're totally, totally out of control. They overreact. Uh, they don't know what's right and wrong. And it's not because someone hasn't tried and worked hard for them. The parents are not to blame. The blame lies in the chemicals that were in the mother's and father's bodies when they were conceiving that child. I tell my college students, because I'm a professor, that the men in this class probably have half the amount of sperm in their testes than I do. Can you imagine? I am three times their age, and I am more than twice the man they are. Every generation before our, our generation was not living as long as we are living and not as healthy as us. And now what we are seeing is the younger generation with tremendously higher incidence of cancer, of obesity, of diabetes, of neurologic disorders, of brain and behavioral abnormalities, of immune disorders. All of these are caused by environmental endocrine disruptors. And the incidence of all of these diseases in our children are much higher than in my generation. At the population level, we are now able to count the percentage of children that are born with these kinds of disorders. And the list is growing. And it starts with ADHD, autism, diabetes, early childhood cancers, early childhood behavioral problems, which we now list as diseases in the United States. A juvenile crime is a disorder that can now be related back to prenatal exposure. We've got early cancers, testicular cancers in boys, obvious birth defects, no doubt that this damage happened before birth. Breast cancer has increased, testicular cancer has increased, as you know. Reproductive problems have increased as well. Obesity is an epidemic in the United States. And uh, behavioral problems and autism. And you know what? Endocrine disruptors in animals can do all 
these things. So you can create obesity, you can create altered behaviors, you can create cancer, and you can create reproductive problems. What you have in the mother, you have much of it, you, you may have in the baby, not necessarily all of it, not necessarily all type of chemicals, but a lot of chemicals pass the placenta, and so exposure starts very early. People do not realize that there are critical periods for development of different systems. And for example, um, us men, we not only have masculinized reproductive system, but we have a masculinized brain. But when those two events occur is completely different. The reproductive system masculinizes in this early time window. The brain masculinizes late in pregnancy. Most of the chemicals that we're concerned about pass from the mother's body through the placenta into the fetus. They also are stored in fat, and when a woman is nursing, she uses the chemicals in her fat along with the fat material to feed her babies. And if you measure a, pr a woman who is lactating, you will find a dramatic drop in many contaminants in her body as she is nursing her baby. The mother is sharing what she has in her body with the baby so that these chemicals are in the baby as a gift from the mother prenatally. And it's not a very, and the mother has no control over this. It's sad for mothers to have to face this dilemma. And it, the answer is, get rid of these chemicals and we won't have this horrible choice mothers have to make. If you look very closely, we're getting into the fourth and the fifth generation now of children who are affected. Look at the odds of those children ever being born without having some kind of a lifetime disorder where they're gonna to have to be cared for, or they're gonna to have to take medication the rest of their lives. I would say, quite frankly, we should be more worried about these health effects. They are gonna be more imminent in terms of human society and humankind and all living organisms on Earth than the threat of climate change. It's going to get us sooner.